Hello, welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be talking about how I got my channel name. Spoiler alert, it has to do with some books I read. Is it my new mug? And painted and it has all these little mushrooms on it. All different shapes and sizes. Red and orange and green. It's orange on the inside. But before we get started, make sure you hit button below and the little bell so that you'll get notified every time I post a new video. Thank you. Okay, let's get started. I thought I'd share with you how I make my favorite evening tea in the colder months. As you can see, I have a steaming mug here. So I've already steeped my tea, but I'm going to show you what kind of tea I'm drinking. This is my skull jar. The tea that I like to drink comes in tea bags that are not individually wrapped, so I transferred them into this jar to keep them fresh. So this is what the tea bags look like and they are a peppermint green tea that's decaffeinated which is why I like to drink it at night. been drinking this tea for years now. It's a seasonal tea. So this is a box that I haven't opened yet. It's my backup box because they only sell this tea around Christmas time. It's made by Trader Joe's. called Candy Cane Green Tea Decaffeinated And I'm keeping the wrapper on Keep it fresh until I'm ready to open this box up. But 
but I wanted to show you what it looked like. In case you want to pick any up this season. Because sometimes they sell out of it very quickly. So I usually start looking for this tea in November. Even by the beginning of December, oftentimes, they've already sold out of their entire seasonal supply. So you understand why I have to have a backup box with me on hand at all times. So I've already steeped my tea. I do like to pull the tea bags out of this one when I'm ready to drink it. So I brought over my cute little tea bag tray shaped like a teapot. So I'll put my tea bags on here. And then I like to add just a tiny bit of sugar-free vanilla creamer. I'll show you. Put two tea bags in this cup. With about 12 ounces of water. And this is my creamer. so good. It's got like a sweet peppermint with a hint of vanilla because of that creamer. It's like the perfect blend of green tea, peppermint, And I love that it's decaffeinated so I can drink it at night, even though caffeine does not affect me the way it affects other people. And I can drink caffeine at night without it disrupting my sleep. But I still try not to drink too much caffeine in a single day. And I did have several cups of coffee today. So I like that I can have my tea without the caffeine consumption. Mm. I've never 
never tried it, but I'm sure if you don't have a Trader Joe's or they run out of this tea, I'm sure that you could purchase some decaffeinated green tea and some peppermint tea and put one bag each in your cup to get a similar result. But I just love it so much in these cooler months. Let's talk about how I got my channel name. So, in 2020, right before COVID and quarantine started, I was rapidly reading, just devouring books. And I was very much in my historical fiction era, reading so many historical fiction books at the time. And I first came across this book. called The Giver of Stars by Jojo Moyes. You may have heard of one of her other very popular books called Me Before You. It was turned into a movie. and Lou, the female main character, is one of my favorite literary characters ever. And I can't remember how I heard about this book, but because I loved Me Before You so much, written by was willing, very willing, and happy to pick this up. And I have no regrets. So this was the start. Really, officially, of my channel. Because this is the book that first inspired my name, The Modern Book Woman. This book is a historical fiction book that takes place in the 1930s in Kentucky and during that time the people in the Appalachian Mountains of Kentucky were very very poor. A lot of them worked in the coal mines. Most of them were illiterate And so these families lived in the rural mountain area. They had really poor working and living conditions. And Eleanor Roosevelt started a library program trying to reach the lower socioeconomic towns and areas of the country. She was the first lady at the time. 
time. So, wife to the president of the United States of America. America, America, America. And this was her passion project. So she funded a library program where women were hired as librarians to ride horses or pack mules with library books up into the mountains on a route to visit these rural illiterate families. Not all of them were illiterate, but a lot of them were. And teach them, especially the young children who didn't go to school, how to read and to bring them books every week. And in a lot of ways, these women were the only contact that these rural poor families had with townsfolk because they couldn't afford nor did they have the resources to go into town very often. A lot of times it was a long trip, sometimes a dangerous trip. And Many of these families, the men worked in the coal mines and were housed at the mines. So the men would be gone working all week and the mothers or grandmothers, the women, would be left at home with the children and the chores. And even in the winter when there was really bad weather, snow. Sometimes the conditions were really terrible, dangerous, um, sometimes life-threatening. And these women, rain or shine, rode their horses and their pack mules up into the mountains like eight hours a day, sometimes only visiting two, maybe three families, would bring them books, would teach them how to read, would read to them. Like if they were elderly and were losing their vision or were too ill to read, and because they were some of the only townsfolk visiting these families, they often were aiding them with other problems like health issues or having babies. Um, any other problems that might be coming up. And they would try to help them with their problems by bringing them books for them to learn about. And for these families, a lot of times, this was the only education that they really got and the only reason that they learned how to read. And this book follows these women who did this job, rain or shine, also Remember, in the 1930s, it wasn't very common for women to be traveling horseback unaccompanied. So they also came across dangerous conditions with other human beings, like men who were out hunting in the mountains or camping or were out and about for other reasons. If you're a woman, 
you understand what a dangerous position that can be to be alone in the woods with a man. So these women put themselves at risk every single day to be able to visit these families, to serve them, and to teach them. And this book follows a group of women who are all based out of the same library as they visit these different families in the mountains and come across different scenarios. It addresses the way that these families were taken advantage of in the coal mines due to their lack of education and inability to read contracts and whatnot. It talks a lot about what it was like to be a woman during that time anywhere, but especially in that area of the country. And even the women who were in the mountains running the house, gardening, hunting, taking care of children. I just found all of the women during this time period to be so inspiring. I'm going to read you the back of the book. So I did listen to this audiobook as well, and I do recommend the audiobook. It was wonderful. These women just fascinated me that a lot of women during that time didn't work at all. But this was considered a job, a full-time job for these women. That they went out every day on their own, like by themselves, because they all had different routes. So they weren't even like riding together, you know? And I just found that so inspiring. Like, the 
those women were badasses, you know? Like, what amazing librarians they were. And what an incredible way to influence history and society for the better. And so, these women, I'm going to share with you a little bit more about the project, but, but these women were often called the book women. And so, maybe you can start to see where my name came from. I thought so inspired by them. I wanted to be a modern version of these book women. I wanted to spread a love for learning and literacy That's where my channel comes in. Thankfully, I do not have to mount a horse or a pack mule to bring books to people in the mountains and ride in terrible weather conditions and risk my life. I just get to get on here in a video and talk to all of you lovely people all around the world via the internet. And these days, books are so much more accessible, but there are still a lot of areas in the world where they're not as accessible. And there's still quite a high level of illiteracy in the world. And even here in my country, in the United States of America, because I live in the United States of America. And even though we're a first world country, and we have a pretty well established library and education system, there's still a very large percentage of say it's something like 20 to 30 percent of people in the United States can't read above a sixth grade reading level. And that's just in the United States. Think about all of the countries in the world who don't have the resources we do. And I just think, you know, books are so important. Literature and learning, education, being able to read is such a powerful tool. I would like to be a modern bookwoman and help spread literacy across the globe. It's like the perfect temperature. So 
So, after I read that book, I was recommended this book and read it shortly after. And this is The Book Woman of Troublesome Creek. Michelle Richardson and there's actually a sequel to this book as well I think it's called The Daughter of the Book Woman of Troublesome Creek but I actually haven't read that one yet But let me read you the back of this book because it covers the same area, the rural Appalachia of Kentucky, the same time period, and the Pack Horse Librarians. But it has a, a little bit different of a focus. Do you prefer soft taps like this? Or harder taps like this? I like both. I like a mixture. Tell me what you like.
go into the triggers that I kind of space out. When do you listen to ASMR? Do you mostly use it to go to sleep? Do you like to listen to it during the day? Do you use it to reduce anxiety? To focus? To regulate your nervous system? Just So, in terms of this book, our main character is a book woman. As the title of the book says, but this story is unique in that it talks about skinned people when I started this book and I hadn't read the summary so I knew nothing about it of course I just knew that it was about a pack horse librarian and I'd read the other book The Giver of Stars so I thought that I would be reading some kind of similar story. As I was reading the book, I thought the blue skinned people was like a made up element, like fic the fictional part of the book. But by the end, I was really intrigued. So I did a little Google search and found out that the blue skinned people were real, that there was a prevalence of families with this blue skin trait that actually came from a blood condition. And I think there was a lot more like inbreeding during that time of with some like genetic defects happening that were affecting the bloodline causing these families to have this disease and appear as though they had blue skin. But the blue tint is actually coming from the lack of oxygen in their blood. Not actual blue skin, if that makes sense. It was an illusion, but very interesting one. There are photos. Go look it up online. It's very, very interesting. To this day, I know of no other books that talk about the blue-skinned people. So, if you know of any other books that talk about these people in history, leave a comment below so we can all check out those books. But I really enjoyed this book as well. 
And again, I was just so inspired by this fictional character's bravery. And again, this book is called The Book Woman of Troublesome. So I've been thinking about starting my booktube channel since 2020. It's taken me four years. One, two, three, four, four years. One, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. To actually start my channel and start posting video content long videos with book content. But it all started with these two books. And these very real book women of the 1930s. Let me tell you a little bit more about this program. I pulled it up for you guys on my phone. And then you can do more research if you want to, but I highly recommend reading these books. I gave Giver of Stars five stars. It's a five star book for me. And I gave the book woman of Troublesome Creek 4.5 stars. Um, it's very good, but I just enjoyed the giver of stars more and the overall, all of the supporting, uh, storylines. There's a lot more in there about women supporting women that I just, I just love any kind of story where women are supporting women. But I would recommend both books 100%. In 1936, WPA Pack Course Librarians served 50,000 families. And by 1937, 155 public schools. Children loved the program. Many mountain schools didn't have libraries. And since they were so far from public libraries, most students had never checked out a book before. Bring me a book to read is the cry of every child as he runs to meet the librarian with whom he has become acquainted wrote one Pack Horse Library supervisor. Not a certain book, but any kind of book. The child has read none of them. And that's an excerpt from an article from the Smithsonian. And that's the thing, is that you know, we go to the library or pull up our library app now and we're looking for very specific books. But back then, first of all, they didn't have as many books in their library. But these families were just happy to have any kind of any kind of book 
books like it was a complete novelty to them. And because these women were assigned a route, they had the same families. They got to know them. They saw them every week. And like the article says, the kids would come running out or even the women or other people in the household would just be so happy to receive books. They weren't even requests for specific books or specific topics. They were just happy to get books on any topic. They just wanted books to read. They just wanted to learn to read. Which I find very humbling. Of course, I love books so much. And I think they are such a gift. I think reading is such a gift. So I just really love what these women stood for. I love the difference they made in history. I love how brave they were. And just really think they are inspiring and wonderful examples of women in history. And that is why I named myself The Modern Book Woman. Because I don't live in these times anymore. But I hope and aspire to being a modern version of these women. And I will be happy to be known as associated with reading and books and book recommendations and that people who I don't hardly ever talk to will walk up to me now and ask me what books they should read or talk to me about a book they read that I recommended on one of my videos or in one of my posts online. It brings me so much joy. So definitely pick up both of these books as soon as you can. And if you've read either of these books, let me know in the comments below. Let me know what you thought. I'm so glad you're here. Remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, do all of the things so that I can be a modern book woman and reach more people, the most people. I hope you guys have a fabulous day or night wherever you are and I will see you all in the next one.